So um, what we are trying to say is that if we extend these things, so this was our theta and this was our phi, right? And if you see here that it's, if this is the change that we are trying to cover in the beam solid angle, this is a 2D change that we are observing. And this change has two components in it, okay? So one is this one and the other is this one. So if you see that in this component, you are seeing change in phi in blue one, you are seeing change in phi and in green one, you are seeing change in theta, right? So that's what we were uh, trying to do, that if there is a change in theta, it will be R D theta. And if there's a change in T in a phi, it will be rho D phi. And that's what we have uh, said that if this is rho D phi, where our rho is R sine theta, we are doing it R sine theta D phi. Okay. So that's what how we are trying to do um, like the, to cover the changes. Is it more clear? Okay, this is. Do we have any questions? Okay. So I will do another example from, I think this is the exercise example, um, which I'm trying to do. Uh, it is the same for this beam angle. So let let me write this statement. So you may or may not write it. It's the first exam. Uh, it's the first problem in your book. Okay. So the the problem is an antenna has a beam solid angle that is equivalent to a trapezoidal patch. So this is patch, they are saying it is a trapezoidal patch with four sides, two of which are parallel on the surface of sphere. And it extends between pi by six theta pi by three That makes it um, 30 theta 60 degrees. And pi by four phi pi makes it just why I'm doing this. Uh, 
45 degrees V 60, just a minute, this is five to three. Okay, just a minute, let me confirm the value. Pi by three, yes, pi by three, okay. So this is also pi by three. Okay, so what we have to do uh, is find following. So they have told you that this, there is an equivalent beam solid angle that you have to find. And, and then there is approximate solid angle that you have to find. So they have said that approximate angle is change in phi and change in theta. So it's theta two minus theta one, they have defined this and it's phi two minus phi one. That's what we have to find, okay? So are we clear about this beam solid angle change, right? One question I want to ask that this is the 2D change that we are proposing, right? So let's see if we have a 3D change, what uh, change you are seeing in this patch? What do you think? So 3D means that you have R, theta and phi. So your theta and phi are already changing, right? If you want to see the change in R, what do you think will be change in this diagram? Before I solve the question, I just want to ask this. Question, My question is that if you want to see change in third dimension, that is your R, right? Because in spherical coordinate, there is R, theta, and phi. So you are seeing change in two dimensions, theta and phi. But let's say you want to see the change in R2, which will not be, of course, beam solid angle. But let's say I, I want to say that there is a change in R, then what? what shape you are imagining? What do you think will be the difference here? Um, would it be like a rectangular prism? Yeah, I think so. That's what you mean. I meant, I think so, right. So it means that change in R will be something like this. Right? Is it making sense? Right? So if you are seeing the change in R, it will be something rec like rectangular prism, Why? And it will call then a volume element. Right now it is a uh, area element, like you are defining this as d a r square sine theta d theta d phi, right? This is the area element, which you are saying that your beam solid angle will be then right? If you are seeing a change in R2, then it will be that is V.
Okay. And what does the V like signify for this one? That just so, velocity of it? It's like when you are seeing um, in rectangular <clears throat> coordinate, when you want to measure the volume, right? Oh, okay. In like the integrate the volume. So you want to see right. change in dx, dy, and dz, right? Okay, I didn't think about it that one. Thank you. Yes. Similarly here, these these are the spherical coordinate, r, theta, and phi, and you want to phi, see what is dv, then it will be r squared sine theta, d theta, d phi, and dr. Okay. So are we clear here? Okay. Yes, Andrew, what your what your question is? I was just gonna answer the rectangular prism. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So that's 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 what we were we were expecting that it should be rectangular prism. So so I think now it's clear what is what is the change in volume, what is the change in area in terms of spherical coordinates, right? Okay, so now let's solve this question. So this question is about beam solid angle, 2D change. So first we want to see uh, solid angle. So let's see. Okay. So we want to know beam solid angle. which will be in this case, if we integrate it. D phi, and this is in like changing from 30 degree to 60 degrees and 45 degrees to 60 degrees. So d theta and d phi. Okay. And we can write it as pi by four, pi by three, pi by six, pi by three, sine theta, d theta, d phi. And then it will become minus cos theta, uh, pi by six, pi by three. And if you want to do here, uh, it will be pi by four and pi by three. So it will be pi by three minus pi by four, and it will become minus cos pi by three, plus cos by the way, six. All right, so we are, we are fine here. I think I write too fast maybe. That's what I, I think that I feel that others are done too. Okay. So when you do this, it will become pi by 12. And this is minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.866, which will become hey, point. Professor, yes. For the uh, fee, was it uh, pi over four 
and pi over three. For, just checking on the check. Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just make sure. Yes. <clears throat> So if you want to convert it to degrees, you can do that by multiplying with 180 by pi. So it's okay. Okay, so Now, if we want to see uh, uh, what you should say, the B part, so this was the A part, approximate solid angle. So here it was more elaborate than before. So they were saying that approximate solid angle is approximately equal to theta two minus theta one and phi two minus phi one. By this, what they mean is if you go back to this uh, picture, right? So if you see, this is a smaller angle that is 30 degrees of theta. And this will be 60 degrees of theta, right? And similarly, in terms of phi, um, Smaller angle is 45 degrees and the bigger angle is 60 degrees. Right? Are we good about this? So when we are saying theta two minus theta one multiplied by phi two minus phi one, we are just doing these um, separations multiplied by this, this separation. So what if you now think about approximation, it does just make a little bit sense because what they are trying to do, they take these um, uh, angle separation and try to approximate it, right? By multiplying both angle separations. So now if we uh, put that in, so it will be, 60 minus 45 degrees multiply by 60 minus 30 degrees. Or if you are uh, doing the previous one in radius, radians, you can also do this in radians too. So just keep just keeping the unit same. So it's it's uh, in phi. It is pi by three minus pi by four. And in theta, it is pi by three minus pi by six. So when you multiply this, it will become pi by 12 mm, multiplied by pi by six. So your beam solid angle will be equal to pi squared by 12. Not, it should not be 12 per minute. 72? Yes, 72, sorry. Okay, and the stay radians are 0.13 something. 708 stay rats. So now we are clear about this. Change in spherical coordinates and stuff.
Okay. I hope it was not too fast this time, but if it is, you can stop me anytime, okay? Hey, professor? Yes. So this is essentially the same method to find the stay radians, correct? Yeah. So why are the approximation uh, a little bit like just uh, a little bit bigger than stay ratings? Are these considered close together or are they fairly far apart? So yeah, let me let me tell you. So the so the difference in error is forty three percent, which is quite a bit, right? Like um, the difference between them, like the approximate and exact. So it's the same as. Mm, all the time you do approximation, right? Um, sometimes we do approximation in McLaurin series, sometimes we do approximations in all sorts of things. So it's just one of, one of the approximations, but, but that yes, they are telling us that approximation does not work uh, best. It gives you a lot of error. So it's just, I think, in industry, in astronomy, they do approximation, but they are just trying to refer that this approximation and the exact angles are different. Okay. So it's not exactly the same or the error is quite a bit. Is it clear, Key? Yes, it, it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I am a little bit shifting my gears. I want to talk about traveling waves because when I was going through the book, I realized that uh, maybe we should touch upon uh, a basics a little bit more because when we will go uh, further from here, we will a lot of time using the mathematical expression that involves the traveling waves. Okay, so that's why I, those who have, know them before uh, and those who don't know, it will be good exercise of reviewing the basics. And I will also uh, post homework maybe today or tomorrow that will involve this exercise of phasers and a little bit of traveling waves. Okay, so that will be your first homework uh, after this class. Okay. So let's start. I Dr. think that, Tom, yes, go ahead. Uh, when would the homework be due? Um, ben, I will post after seven days then that. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you have this document with in front of you, just open it on your laptops or the phone, or like wherever you are using uh, the document. So we will go through that document, okay? Um, I am doing right now basics, review of complex numbers. That is 1.6. Okay. So review of complex numbers. We have done it so many times already but just to see that how they behave, we want to do it one more time. So this is X and Y. And if this is a complex number Z, which is making an angle theta with this, then we say Z is equal to X plus J Y, which is equals to Z or R, some people say E J, Theta. So are you familiar with this terminology? Okay. So, and this, in this case, you know that this X is Z cos theta and Y is Z sine theta. Okay, and theta is 10 inverse Y by X 
and z is x square plus y square. Okay. So we are good till now, okay? Now, now we want to just introduce an Euler's identity. Euler's identity is but it says ej theta is equal to cos theta plus j sine theta. Right? And and if you want to write this cos theta, that is equals to e j theta plus e minus j theta by two, and sine theta is e j theta minus e minus j theta by 2j. So all of us know, uh, know this stuff. Something is new here. Yeah, we know, I believe. Okay. So I'm just trying to look at it in another way that can I write um, cos theta as real part of E j theta, right? Because it's a real part of E j theta. And sine theta is real part of, oh, not real. It's an imaginary part of EJ theta. Right? So it's it's another way of looking at it. Like this. So we are we are good about it. We have done this before. Just keep these things in your mind. Okay. Now if I want to move further. And I want to review phasers. Um, have you done phasers before? No, no. Andrew? Uh, no. Okay, John Taylor? Uh, I could use a review. Uh, what, what I'm saying, have you done phasers before? No. Okay. Okay, then, I mean, I will, I will review it. I hope that it makes sense. Can you see my screen? I yeah. don't know why it's saying working offline. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so let's try to do it. I just don't want to go into too much of an example, but I just, uh, this is given here, you can see it later, but I just want to go through the phasers. Okay. Mm. Phasers is nothing, it's just um, uh, exponential representation of a sinusoid, okay? It's just one of the representation of the sinusoidal signal. So, okay. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have a sinusoidal signal 
like this. In this signal, if this is your time axis, then you are having a certain period of a sinusite, right? And if you want to describe the sinusoidal signal, you will say that, let's say this is a voltage signal, Vs of T, then you will say that this sinusoid is actually, you can say that, that this is actually Vm cos omega T, where this is your amplitude and this is your frequency, what you should say, angular frequency. And this is the time axis. Okay. Now, if uh, where your omega is 2 pi f, which is equals to 2 pi by capital T. Okay, amplitude means that you have this thing somewhere, Vm. Okay, so we are good about this. But in terms of sinusoid, we have phase or phase two. Phase means that right now, this sinusoid um, is starting from zero, right? Which is norm, not a normal cause function, right? Normal cause function should start from like, if it is uh, at t is equals to zero, it should start from one, right? Is it clear? So it means that if I'm saying that this is my cause function, it has some additional phase in it, okay? What I mean to say that normal cause function is something like this, right? So this is a normal cause function. This is not a cause function. This is a sine function. But if I'm describing it in terms of cause function, it means that this function if I just try to make sense of it, this is additional phase in it, right? Is it clear till now? Yes. I'm yes. not going into minuses and plus right now. I'm just trying to say that this is a phase. Yes, go ahead. I was just saying yes. Okay. So it, it could be minus phase, it could be plus phase. I'm just saying that these this is a quantity that is added. So if I want to express this in the terms of phase, I will write it as so now the cost argument has uh, like the um, dependence on time and it has an added constant that is its phase. So now your cause can tell you that from where it should start and from where you should not start it. Okay. So that's about it. So we know that this is a sinusoidal representation of uh, sinusoidal line. This is a a time domain representation of sinusoid, okay? So this is a Okay. Now I want to describe phasor representation. 
Hey, Professor, what is the phase phaser angle uh, zero? I forgot what that is. Is it like, you know, like a certain, like within that equation of the VS uh, T, is there like a certain moment? Yeah, it's not zero sometimes. First, I forget what reasons when I learned it. Yes, yes, I'll tell you. So if you're cause omega, if you, this is your cause omega T signal, right? And you are seeing that it starts from where it should start, right? Then your phase is zero. Because okay. let's, let's say you are saying T, right? So you are saying your T zero will give you cause zero, will give you one, right? And it's starting already from one. Thank you. Yeah. So in that case, your phase will be zero. But if it's it's not doing what it's supposed to do, then there is there must be some phase in it. Okay. So now the phaser representation. So now can I write this thing as as I wrote it above? Real part of E J omega t plus Does this make sense, Michael? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Nick, do you think it's fine? Christopher? Yeah, I get it. Okay, so this is one of the representation. Okay, now I can write this thing as as well. So now specifically if I define phaser, I will use some other, you know, symbol. It is V naught E J phi naught. So if you closely look at the phaser, what we are trying to do here, we are trying to ignore omega t part. It's not like it's vanished. It's just like that we are writing it in terms of phi, thinking that omega is somewhere here and it may be same for multiple signals. So that's why we are just writing it in terms of its angle. So that's a phaser. I mean, it's not at all mm, difficult. It's actually very easy, but I think it's just name is like that. So I will uh, do one of the, you know, just to make you guys more comfortable with phaser. I want to do one of the time function and just say that what its phaser is. Another, before doing that, I want to do one more thing. So we are good about this? Okay. So if you see, 
Mm. So, I mean, if you closely look at this, you can say that it's the same as what we have done with the Euler's identity lie, right? Cos theta, we were doing EJ theta, the same as EJ omega T plus V. So I'm just thinking that in you know, normal uh, trigonometry, your sine theta is equal to cos theta minus pi by two, right? You know this thing? Uh, if you don't know, I just write it. So if it will become zero plus sine theta, so sine theta is equals to cos theta minus pi by two. So if I just want to write sine omega t is the same as cos omega t minus pi by just you need to remember this thing. I mean, just keep in mind that we have done this. So we know from where it comes from. Okay, now I want to do one of the problem just to make ourselves, it will be in your uh, like, you know, homework but I just want to do it so that we can, we may be comfortable. So we are good about it till now. Any problem, any confusion? I feel that, so electromagnetics, people say it's too tough, it's too imaginative, it's too complex. And people say, oh, antennas is too tough. I think nothing is tough if you make it easy, you know? First, to make it easy, first and foremost thing is that you don't have to think that it's tough. It's, it's really simple. And once Einstein said that if you can express something in simple terms, it means that you know it, okay? So I feel that this is very easy. And this is very interesting if you if you just think about it. Okay, so clear your mind and think you are doing very interesting stuff and stuff. Okay. Okay, let's find the phaser. Of time function. So if I have this question, and I want to write its phaser, its phaser will be Nine is it the amplitude? Yes, I was just saying that what we have done with the angle, uh, like the signs. Okay, so this is its phaser. Right? And if I just want to write one more phaser here, mm.
okay, plus pi by four, sine omega t plus pi by four. So what I will do here is, I will write it as 12 cause. So just keep in mind, all we, we define all the time it in terms of cause. So I will change this in terms of cause, cause omega t plus pi by four minus pi by two. Because I defined this in this manner, sine omega t is equal to cos omega t minus pi by two. So if there is something with that, it also comes that, and that will become 12 cos omega t minus pi minus pi by four, right? Am I right or not? You're good. Okay. So, so my phasor here is 12 E minus J pi by four. So when we're trying to find like the phasors of a sinusoid signal, if, if we're given a sine, we always got to convert it to a cosine? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. Okay, so one more. Um, so it's, um, I of t minus two cos omega t plus three pi by four. What do you think its phasor will be? Ria, what do you think its phasor will be? Is it negative two e to the power j three pi over four? Yes, that's right. Okay. So we are good till now. Parker, what do you think? Yeah, this makes sense. Okay. So now I am coming to the traveling waves because now we have, I think, good basics to cover that. Okay. Okay. So what is the traveling wave? It's not the simple sinusoid, okay? Traveling wave is when your particles in sinusoids are traveling with respect to space and time, okay? So when I'm defining the traveling wave, I'm saying that when, I think I wrote somewhere here too, the, exact definition a wave is observed traveling through a medium a crest or trough is seen moving along 
from particle to particle. And this type of wave is called a traveling wave. It means that it's not a simple sinusoid. You see it is traveling. It's changing in terms of time and in terms of uh, space. Okay, so it's not that there is only EM wave. There are all si sorts of waves, okay? There is sound wave. Um, there is like the waves in the water. So like the earthquake is also another form of wave. It's like the vibration wave. So there are all sorts of traveling waves which starts from a certain point and travels to the end, okay? So that's, that's the like the types of waves So we have sound waves, we have like the vibrations in earthquake, like during earthquake, and we have EM waves. So every wave is different from the other wave, okay? Some waves need medium to travel. Like the sound waves need medium to travel. Like um, their, their, their way of travel is changed if you take the medium off. That's why if you have a vacuum, your sound wave cannot travel. It needs the medium to travel. But it's not the case with EM. Electromagnetic wave can travel without medium. It can travel in vacuum. So every wave is different than the other, okay? But there are some properties that are common to Okay, so waves carry energy. So when they travel, they transfer energy from one point to other. Similarly, they have velocity because they are produced due to the disturbance in something. That's why they have velocity too. Their frequencies are linear in such a way that we can apply superposition principle. Okay. Okay, so that's about it. Another thing, another way of thinking about it is that um, if you have a string and you pull this like that, there is also a wave that travels from one point of string to the other. So I think that's what the figure 1.7 says in the document that how these waves uh, propagate, like, like looking at it. Then we are also talking about the wave fronts that we have talked before in the last lecture that we have said that what is plane wave front, what is cylindrical wave front, what is spherical wave front, and what is 1D wave front. So now I think it makes more sense that to visualize that what is wave front, right? So why we are talking about traveling waves and how we will relate it with the mathematics we will see that too, okay? So I think let's talk about mathematics then, okay. So now I am talking about sinusoidal waves in lossless medium. Lossless means that they will never attenuate and they will just keep going. So that's what here it says that medium is lossless. If the wave amplitude does not attenuate, means that 
If this is the wave, it keeps its amplitude as it is. There is no dissipation, it just keep moving, okay? So this is a lossless medium. Okay. And if I write 1D representation of sinusoidal wave, mathematical representation, that will be So if you see this expression, what do you think is different in this expression than the normal sinusoid? Um, that accounts for the wavelength and the... Yeah, that's right. That has something that accounts with the space. So you can see that there's a difference in the normal sinusoid expression, now you're seeing a quantity that is dependent on X. So this is just due to the traveling wave. So now if you say, in other words, my argument of cost is changed due to the traveling wave. So I just can write this as phi x of t thinking that this whole is my argument of the cosine. Cedric, is it clear? Hello, are we good? Aaron, are we good? Yeah. Are you confused? Uh, no, nah, I'm understanding it, I think. Okay. Bryce, what do you think? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay. So if I just try to write argument in um, separate way, I can just write it like this. Okay, so now if we see that traveling wave, it's not um, that you can say that it has two variables that we need to think about, X and T. So it not only uh, change in T, there is not only dependence in T, but there is independence of X as well. Okay, I think I, when I was showing you wavefront, there was a 2D change happening in this. But for the mathematical purposes, we will pay attention on one dimensional at a time. We will not deal with 
two dimensions simultaneously, okay? So that's why if you uh, pay attention on figure 1.9, I will draw it here again in your document. You can see that they have uh, draw, the, the, they drew a wave for both, like the one, uh, like the T and X. It's the same wave. I just draw it again like this. Uh, it's the same wave. Okay, I just, it's the same. Okay, it's just. Okay, but if you can see in the first case, they are saying X zero. And in the second case, they are saying zero T. And because we have to deal in 1D, they are expressing it in two things, X and T, right? So in the first case, X is uh, your X axis. And in the second case, T is your axis, X axis. So the difference is that when it is, uh, T is your X axis, you are saying that it's time period is T, capital T. The time period means, so if I'm just doing this, when wave is trying to repeat itself, this is T. And this is lambda. So in both the cases, uh, the representation is a little bit different, okay? So it, when it is dependent on time, your time period is one T, otherwise it is, a spatial period is one lambda, okay? Okay, so now we all, all the time we saw change in time. We never saw change in X, right? We never saw, I think a traveling wave. So we, we are putting our attention towards change in X, okay? So that's what we are seeing in uh, figure 1.10 that you are seeing are change in X, but we are clear about this right now, or do we have a question? Okay, another thing is if you want to see change in X or in the space, you are saying that um, you want to tell that whether it is moving forward or it is moving backward. So there are two types of, uh, you know, propagation. We need to define whether it's a plus X propagation or it's a minus X propagation. Plus X propagation means that it is moving in this direction or it is moving in this direction. This is a minus X propagation, okay? So we will also tell that, that whether it's a plus X propagation of wave or it's a minus X propagation of waves, okay? So, You can also say that propagation of waves in plus, oh, in propagation of waves in space. Okay. Another thing is that it's not that your, this thing will always be X. It could be any space, uh, like it can be Y, it could, it could be Z, okay? So it could be, right now we are defining that it is propagating in X direction, but it could also propagate in Y direction and it could also propagate in Z direction. So it's a normal X axis, okay? Okay, propagation of waves in space. Okay, so now if uh, we put our attention on figure 1.10, we can see 
that this wave is propagating in plus x direction. How we are seeing it? I'm just not. So you are seeing that if this is t is equals to zero, x, x, t is equal to t by four, and this is t is equal to t by two, then, and this is pi lambda by two, and this is lambda by two, and this is lambda by two. So you are seeing that the same thing you are seeing here and same thing you are seeing here. If you are just following the same point. And similarly, you can see if you follow the same point, you can see it's moving like this. So it's like just picking at one point and see whether this, where this point is moving with time. Okay, but of course there is a mathematical representation of the direction of propagation as well. So it's not like we are just saying, oh, now the wave front or the crest is changing like that. So it's the plus X movement. No, we need to define it. We need to tell whether it's plus X movement or plus Y movement. So, so if I think I write it here that my, and for now, we are thinking our phase is zero because we are exactly starting cause from where it should start. So for now, our phi is zero, like the, the difference in phase. So I am saying if my y x of t is y naught, y naught means that I have chosen any point on my wave. And I am saying that this is equal to cause two pi t by t minus two pi x by lambda, okay? Then, because it's constant, I can also write it like this, um, y naught by a, cos inverse is equal to cos, uh, no, is equal to two pi t by t minus two pi x by lambda. And this will be constant because there is no dependency here, but we have this two pi t by t minus two pi x by lambda, okay? Now we want to know the velocity. We want to know uh, what will be the velocity here. So we will take the derivative on both sides with respect to time. And that will become to know velocity. Some constant is equal to I'm writing it here again. So this would be zero.
And this will become two pi by capital T uh, because of derivative. And this will become Now, if I move it here, and this will become the lambda f dx by dt where this is my propagation velocity. So from this expression, how do we know the direction, right? Right now your propagation velocity is positive. So you can say that it is propagating in plus X direction, but if it was propagating, like if you had, my, uh, instead of minus, you had plus here, right? Your propagation direction would be negative or propagation velocity would be negative, right? Can you repeat that one more time? Yes. Um, so I'm saying this propagation velocity is positive right now, right? When it will be negative, when your this thing will, so if you have two pi t by t plus two pi x by lambda. So if you're in your argument, you have plus here, then your propagation velocity would be negative, right? Which means that it is heading towards minus X direction. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I want to, before closing, I just want to um, make some points like the concluding, concluding remarks. And we will start from there that we said that this is propagating in X. That's why it can be represented as two pi t by t minus two pi x by lambda, okay? And we can also write it a cos two pi f t minus if I say kx. So in this document, it's, they say beta, but I hear I'm saying this is two pi lambda because in Blanis, in our book, we are referring it as a k. So this is k, which is called wave number. Okay, and so I can write this as two pi omega t minus kx. So this is propagation in positive x. And if there is a propagation in negative x direction, it would be
Are we good till here? Luis, we are good? All good, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think I will stop here and uh, we will start from the same thing. I think there is one or two points to make um, and uh, on Thursday. So I think that's, that's really good to know uh, that we are touching traveling wave and now you will understand a complicated expression that we were doing in the first lecture with the standing waves, okay? So we just did introduction, but we will explain it later as well. So I think, thank you. And there is a minute paper on Canvas. Uh, fill that in. If you do it maximum, that would be good because I think from minute paper, I came to know that some of you did not understand the beam solid angle thing. So I did it again. So it's always good to fill that in. Thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.